Is it rational to believe in God? Many people think that faith and reason are opposites, that belief in God and tough-minded logical reasoning are like oil and water. They are wrong. Belief in God is far more rational than atheism. No, sir. You are wrong. Given that a god is a magical anthropomorphic immortal evidently imagined out of nothing by superstitious primitives who didn't understand anything in the natural world around them, it is already irrational to imagine that such a thing actually exists, especially with no reason to believe that and plenty of good reasons not to. The word rational is defined as something that is agreeable to reason, reasonable, and describes someone having possession of the full faculty of reason, of exercising sound reason, being able to be reasoned with. But belief in God requires faith, according to a consensus of dictionaries, scriptural references, hymns, sermons of theologians past and present, all reveal that faith is an assertion of unreasonable conviction assumed without reason and defended against all reason, meaning that people of strong faith refuse to reason, reject reason, and will not be reasoned with. It is never wise to be completely convinced of anything told by another without question, without reservation, or without reason, or simply to assume anything without precedent or parallel, especially in the absence of verifiable evidence and despite all the overwhelming evidence to the contrary. That is about as irrational as it is possible to be. In practical application, faith is irrational by definition. Logic can show that there is a God. If you look at the universe with common sense and an open mind, you'll find that it's full of God's fingerprints. No, you won't. If you assume your conclusion at the onset and use confirmation bias to keep circling back to your initial assumption, which remains baseless, then you can imagine patterns that are not really there. Statistics show that the more you know, the less you believe. So the more closely you look at the universe, the less likely you are to imagine any fingerprints of God. Cosmologists, geologists, and biologists are the scientists most likely to detect these fingerprints if they were actually there. Yet these three fields have the fewest believers and are each overwhelmingly atheist. Similar trends exist among anthropologists, archaeologists, historians, as well as geneticists, and so on, who are increasingly unable to pretend there was ever a god there. Now why is that? Because if your mind has not been closed by faith and is therefore still capable of thinking rationally, then you should have common sense enough to realize that the whole of humanity is only capable of surviving on a portion of the surface of one tiny pebble of rock and metal out of an immeasurable cosmos inaccessible to us, inhospitable to us, and clearly not manufactured for us or with us in mind. The very idea that the incomprehensible expanse of the cosmos was conjured by the equivalent of a genie for the purposes of humanity is a delusion of one who literally cannot see the big picture and will not acknowledge evident truths they cannot accept. A good place to start is with an argument by Thomas Aquinas, the great 13th century philosopher and theologian. The argument starts with the not very startling observation that things move. But nothing moves for no reason. Something must cause that movement. And whatever caused that must be caused by something else, and so on. But this causal chain cannot go backwards forever. It must have a beginning. There must be an unmoved mover to begin all the motion in the universe, a first domino to start the whole chain moving, since mere matter never moves itself. A modern objection to this argument is that some movements in quantum mechanics, radioactive decay, for example, have no discernible cause. But hang on a second. Just because scientists don't see a cause doesn't mean there isn't one. It just means science hasn't found it yet. Maybe someday they will. But then there will have to be a new cause to explain that one. And so on and so on. But science will never find the first cause. That's no knock on science. It simply means that a first cause lies outside the realm of science. Another way to explain this argument is that everything that begins must have a cause. Nothing can come from nothing. I have a friend who is considered far more of an expert on this than you ever will be, and he disagrees with you. But considering your understanding of nothing, then I don't believe that anything came from nothing either. That's one of many reasons why your argument fails. But you do believe that. 
You believe that your God created everything out of nothing, creation ex nihilo, that he spoke everything into existence with an incantation spell. There was no mechanism involved. Your God is supposed to be bigger than big and stronger than strong and infinite in every direction one can exaggerate precisely because it is a creature of the id. You can give him whatever powers you want so that he can do whatever he wants simply by willing things into being, mind over matter. Abracadabra is Aramaic, for I create as I speak, and that's what you believe. You actually believe in pure freaking magic. Taking your point beyond that, the first question I would have to ask is, where did your god come from? I can answer that question. Man obviously created all his own gods in his own image, and there's plenty of evidence to support that conclusion. But I know you cannot answer that question. All you can do is make the excuse that God somehow exists beyond time and outside of our reality, which of course means that he does not exist in reality. I do not grant your excuse because that's all it is. An apology for an unsupported assertion of a baseless assumption promoted only with the lies of equivocation and defensible only with logical fallacies. So if there's no first cause, there can't be second causes, or anything at all. In other words, if there's no creator, there can't be a universe. So in your very limited perspective, the only way that you would allow for the universe to come into being is if it were conjured by the magic of a deity, essentially the same thing as being poofed out of nothing by a genie. A genie who was always there for eternity until he eventually got an idea to create something besides himself. This is what you consider logical. It's not, of course. Logic disagrees with you. Apart from the logical fallacy of the circular argument routing back to the assumed conclusion, your video also shows the God of the Gaps argument, where anything that cannot be explained by science can be blamed on magic. Gods and magic are the most infantile excuses men have ever made up to explain the things they did not understand. Why should we imagine that any first cause should also have a personality, intelligence, or purposeful intent? Why do people imagine that everything beyond us should think or behave like us? This is one way humans have always been confused by their deceptive imaginations. Once upon a time, our ancestors believed that thunder, lightning, and volcanoes were gods in action, that comets were an omen, that the stars and planets had human characteristics of thought and mood, that sickness was a result of witchcraft, and that epilepsy was a result of demonic possession. In each case, the real truth might never have been discovered had we been satisfied by these lies. And in each case, the reality was a revelation of whole new fields of study previously unimagined and vastly more complex than the simple excuses made up in our ignorance. No doubt that pattern will continue, such that if we ever do discover the cause of the Big Bang, it too will be so complex and such a vast wealth of knowledge that it will render our previous belief in gods just as laughably silly as every other field of study so far has already done. But what if the universe were infinitely old, you might ask? Well, all scientists today agree that the universe is not infinitely old, that it had a beginning in the Big Bang. Wherein the origin of space itself is also connected to time. Some cosmologists chose to illustrate the beginning of time as an asymptote on our Cartesian coordinate system. As we scan backward, time slows down as we plunge into the Big Bang until one second equals infinity when t equals zero. That means that while the Big Bang is still a beginning, it also simultaneously is eternal and therefore infinitely old. If the universe had a beginning, then it didn't have to exist and things which don't have to exist must have a cause. There's confirmation of this argument from Big Bang cosmology. Then again, I have to ask, where did your God come from? Because God doesn't have to exist. No matter how you're attached to that emotional crutch or how desperately you need to maintain that belief, nothing has to exist unless it serves a purpose. The only purpose God serves is to give people an excuse, not just for what they don't understand, but any excuse they need. They don't have to face their own death because they'll just pretend that it's not really real and that they'll live on forever afterwards, happy and comfortable all the time. Unbelievable. They can use their God to rationalize or justify anything and escape accountability, too. You don't have to actually help anyone. You can just wish upon a star that they'll get the help that they need. You don't have to be accountable to anyone or be responsible for your actions. You can live like there's no tomorrow because God will come and destroy the world soon anyway and... You can just assume that he's already forgiven you for whatever you should have atoned for, and you can justify all other atrocities simply by thinking that God hates all the same things that you do. 
But if you are accountable and responsible and you want to understand the way things really are, then God doesn't have to exist and there's really no way he could. The universe only comes into focus once you put down the God glasses. We now know that all matter, that is the whole universe, came into existence some 13.7 billion years ago and it's been expanding and cooling ever since. No scientist doubts that anymore, even though before it was scientifically proved, atheists called it creationism in disguise. Now add to this premise a very logical second premise, the principle of causality, that nothing begins without an adequate cause. And you get the conclusion that since there was a Big Bang, there must be a Big Banger. But is this Big Banger God? Why couldn't it be just another universe? Because Einstein's general theory of relativity says that all time is relative to matter, and since all matter began 13.7 billion years ago, so did all time. So there's no time before the Big Bang. The issue here isn't about time. Matter and energy are interchangeable and could be eternal. Cosmic inflation from a quantum singularity could be explained as three-dimensional space-time emerging from a fourth spatial dimension which could have entirely natural catalysts and still wouldn't have anything coming from nothing, nor any another universe either, but rather from a larger plane far beyond any current concept. And even if there is time before the Big Bang, even if there is a multiverse, that is, many universes, with many Big Bangs, as string theory says is mathematically possible, that too must have a beginning. An absolute beginning is what most people mean by God. No, it isn't. Apart from a handful of deists and quasi-pantheists like Spinoza and Einstein, who was atheist, what most people mean by God is an intelligent director controlling all things, rewarding good deeds and punishing bad as, as if this was an episode of the Twilight Zone and God was Rod Serling. Otherwise, what everyone means by God is a conscious thinking mind in the image of man behind everything in the universe and there is just no reason to believe anything like that. Yet some atheists find the existence of an infinite number of other universes more rational than the existence of a creator. Never mind that there is no empirical evidence at all that any of these unknown universes exists, let alone a thousand or a gazillion. A few moments ago, you said that if there was no creator, then there could be no universe. Yet a multiverse as a boiling cauldron of universal Big Bangs is just one of several possibilities which negate your conclusion. However, God is not possible, because God is defined by his miraculous nature. Miracles share the same definition as magic, evoking supernatural forces or entities to control or forecast natural events. But miracles are also defined by being inexplicable by science because they defy the laws of physics, meaning that they are physically impossible and thus God is impossible by definition. God is also not indicated by anything except, of course, for the compiled fables of men. Repugnant atrocities and contradictory absurdities which have all been falsified and which are certainly false. That and all the practices of faith have a perfect rate of absolute failure in all applications. Human vanity, ignorance, fear of the unknown, and fear of knowing are among the last reasons anyone still believes in a God. The conclusion that God exists doesn't require faith. You know better than that. Yes, it absolutely does, and as a Christian, you know that it does. A firm conviction without any evidence is necessary for your belief system. That's why it's praised throughout your doctrine and promoted as the highest priority and an obligate requirement of salvation. You know better than that. Atheism requires faith. I'm not just an atheist and an anti-theist. I'm an epistivist. That means that I reject faith as being the most dishonest position it is possible to have. It really is inherently dishonest, and you already know that it is. That's why you assert as fact things that are not evidently true. That's why you just told both of the lies you just did, lies of projection and equivocation. I see it from theists all the time, but understand that you don't have evidence, and we don't have faith. In order to preserve a preferred belief, you're trying to distance yourself from faith and trying to project all your own faults onto those who will not share any of those flaws, misrepresenting our position as a straw man fallacy. I won't let you do that. It takes faith to believe in everything coming from nothing. 
Yet that is what you believe, not me. That's also what Krauss believes, but the way he explains nothing, it doesn't require any faith to understand what he means. So you're deliberately misrepresenting both of our positions. It takes only reason to believe in everything coming from God. And yet there is no reason you can provide why anyone should believe that. It certainly wasn't reason that led you to that conclusion. If it was, you wouldn't have to lie about it, depending on arguments instead of evidence. We can either base our beliefs on faith in lieu of evidence, or we can base our understanding on evidence. That's what reason is, and you haven't got any. I'm Peter Kraft, professor of philosophy at Boston College for Prager University. And I'm Aaron Ra, Texas State Director of American Atheists and a free thought contributor to the Global Secular Council. I'm also a professional public speaker like Dr. Kraft, except that he charges $2,000 a day for his speaking gigs, and that's just one of many reasons why I'm much more reasonable. Please share this video, and if you like to support anything that I'm doing, then pledge a dollar per video on my Patreon channel. Activism is typically not-for-profit, and everything I do is by donation, so thank you for your support.